This is Dr. Stewart of the Timonium Foot and Ankle Center. What I am about to show you is a corrective surgical procedure to fuse the first metatarsophalangeal joint, perform a second metatarsal while osteotomy, correct a dorsally dislocated toe with the Arthrex Scorpion system, repair a second digit hammer toe with a K-wire, and perform a gastrocnemius recession. A bunion deformity, also known as hallux valgus, is when the first metatarsal bone is prominent along the inside of the foot. In certain cases, like the one I'm about to show you, bunions can lead to degenerative arthritis of the joint. A hammer toe results when there is a flexion contracture at the proximal interphalangeal joint, leading to prominent bone at the joint on the top of the toe. In certain cases, the big toe drifts beneath the second toe, resulting in partial dislocation at the second MPJ. Patients will typically complain of pain on the side of the foot, the bottom of the foot, and around the top of the toe. These deformities make wearing shoes very difficult and painful. The gastrocnemius aponeurosis is a large tissue band in the back of the calf and is a deforming force leading to forefoot deformities. This patient has a large bunion and the second toe is overlapping the big toe. The goal of the surgery is to straighten the first and second toes to eliminate the overlap and to eliminate the pain. I make the skin incision along the medial calf and use my finger to feel my way down to the shiny white gastrocnemius aponeurosis. I then grasp the aponeurosis and cut it from medial to lateral. As the tissue is cut, the underlying muscle is exposed. The foot now easily dorsiflexes to above 10 degrees at the ankle with the knee straight. Here we can see the patient's limited range of motion at the big toe joint as a result of arthritis. The second ray procedure is started with a skin incision taken down to the subcutaneous tissue. The proximal interphalangeal joint of the second toe is identified and the extensor tendon is transected in a Z fashion. The tendon is then reflected back proximally to the level of the second metatarsophalangeal joint. The collateral ligaments are transected at the second metatarsophalangeal joint. Next, a meglamory elevator is introduced into the second metatarsophalangeal joint and is used to free the plantar plate. The head of the second digit proximal phalanx is transected with a sagittal saw and removed. Next, a while osteotomy is performed in the head of the second metatarsal. The capital fragment is then migrated proximally. And a K wire is used to temporarily fixate the bone. A second wire is then placed into the base of the second digit proximal phalanx. A joint extractor is then used to open up the second metatarsophalangeal joint to expose the plantar plate. Here we can see the plantar plate. The plantar plate is carefully transected and removed off the base of the second toe and care is taken to avoid cutting the underlying flexor tendon. Here you can see the plantar plate is within the pickup and the intact flexor tendon is identified beneath the freer elevator. Next, the Arthrex Scorpion system is used to introduce the fiber wire into the plantar plate 
creating a horizontal mattress suture in the plate. We are now able to advance the planter plate distally with the sutures. Parallel drill holes are created in the base of the proximal phalanx to allow for passage of the fiber wire suture. The capital fragment of the second metatarsal head is stabilized and the osteotomy is secured with a 2-0 twist-off screw. The bony overhang is reduced with a ronjor and then smoothed with a sagittal saw. A lasso is used to pass the fiber wire onto the top of the base of the proximal phalanx. The step is repeated to pass the other strand of fiber wire onto the proximal phalanx. We can now see the planter plate has been advanced and is tighter and as a result will reduce the dorsal dislocation of the toe. With the toe held in slight plantar flexion at the second metatarsophalangeal joint, the fiber wire is tied down on top of the base of the proximal phalanx. We again demonstrate the advancement and tightening of the plantar plate. Next, a K wire is drilled out the tip of the toe and then back across the proximal interphalangeal joint. The wire is used to hold the toe straight and is removed in the office six weeks after surgery. The extensor tendon is then reopposed with absorbable sutures. A skin incision is then made over the first metatarsal phalangeal joint. The extensor tendon is protected and the joint capsule is freed. A sagittal saw is used to remove the bony prominence from the side and top of the bone. A reamer is then placed on the head of the first metatarsal to remove the cartilage.
Multiple drill holes are placed in the head of the first metatarsal to help facilitate fusion. The same steps are repeated in the base of the proximal phalanx. A wire is then used to temporarily fixate the fusion. The placement of the wire is then checked on the mini C-arm. Prior to introducing permanent fixation, the position of the fusion is checked by using the top of the tray from the screw set. Next, a cannulated headless screw is placed across the first metatarsal phalangeal joint. Proper screw placement is confirmed on the mini C-arm and the wire is removed. A small plate and screws are placed across the joint for further stabilization. We now can see the proper alignment of the big toe after the fixation has been placed. All fixation is checked on the mini C-arm. Blood from the patient is spun down and platelet-rich plasma is injected into the fusion site to aid in bone healing. The deep tissues are closed with absorbable sutures. As you can see, the bunion has been removed and the first and second toes are now straight and no longer overlapping. Additional images show that the deformities have been corrected. To learn more about bunions, hammer toes, arthritis, and dislocated joints, visit our website at www.timoniumfootandankle.com.